My Wandering Jew is a little bit uh, of a disaster at the moment. This needs some TLC. And in this video, I'm going to be sharing the five things you ought to know when it comes to caring for this house plant, as well as uh, repotting this guy and just making it a lot happier. So if you're into that, uh, stay tuned. So today I'm going to be using basically four or five parts of an orchid bark mix um, for uh, this houseplant, but I'm going to throw in about one part of horticultural charcoal and about one part of um, some gritty kind of sandy mix, and that will really help um, with you know, keeping things draining well, because one of the mistakes that I made with this plant early on is overwatering. Uh, you definitely don't want to overwater this plant, and since I stopped watering it, it's just grown and exploded, so I've got to kind of get rid of some of that dead foliage and revive this guy, and I think by using this soil mix, it's really gonna help. Thanks for checking out this video. I'm Tyler. If you like what you're seeing or you find this video to be useful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, or better yet, you can hit that subscribe button. Now to really show me some love, click on the bell for alerts and notifications for future content. Oh yeah, don't forget to check out my merch store, tylermossop.com. So guys, I'm going to be using this nice and large container, and I did go ahead, I'm not sure if you can see, but I did go ahead and put in some horticultural charcoal to the base of this container too help keep the uh, soil mix nice and dry. Any excess water will come through that drainage hole, but also get absorbed by that horticultural charcoal, which is really important for this plant, which does not like to be overwatered. Typically, people love to put these in hanging uh, baskets, which makes sense. They look really pretty. I don't have, um, like a spot to put this in a hanging basket close to um, my south facing window and it's done really well kind of on the ground. It's just kind of spreading and taking over on the ground. So I'm basically putting it in um, a slightly larger container that's got more height to it so things can really fill out and sort of expand from there and continue to kind of crawl on the ground, which I really like. But um, first things first, before we jump into some of these critical and crucial care tips, I'm going to get it out of its previous container and get it situated in this. So I will be right back um, once that is in here. <laughs> All right, guys, we're definitely making a mess in here today. Uh, lots of long, lanky roots in there. Um, yeah looking all right, but I think that previous container didn't have any drainage, not the greatest setup for this plant. So again, in its new home, it's going to be much, much better. Hopefully you can get a good idea of how crazy these roots are. So we're not quite there. This still needs to get uh, more soil, but I just kind of wanted to, as I was kind of talking about this plant, kind of come in here and just get rid of some of the dead foliage on it. Um, but yeah, I haven't been the kindest to this plant, um, it hasn't been on the top of my radar, so it has a lot of opportunity to do much better once this is all kind of cleaned up, but they are very hardy plants, and you know, in part, that's why they make great house plants, because they're basically impossible to murder them or kill off, even if you're trying, um, kind of like I was, which was not intentional, but um, these plants, uh, again, they appreciate uh, bright indirect light. Um, I have mine just in set from a south facing window, but I think you can even go um, as far as putting these like in an east facing window if that uh, works for you. Um, like I said, I think I had this all wrong. It was in a non-draining container, which is never a good thing. Um, and I pretty sure I was over watering it. When I backed off watering um, and kept this much drier, it seemed to just kind of explode in new growth. Um, that being said, I think you would want to water this probably, um, you know, once a month or thereabouts. 
uh, keep this like, you know, I don't think you want it to completely dry dry out, but uh, you definitely don't want this um, getting root rot sitting, the roots sitting in water or anything like that. So having that horticultural charcoal at the base um, will be all the better. Um, again, I don't think these really require, they're not heavy feeders or require a lot of fertilization, which is great, but what they do really need is sort of a constant um, temperature, um, so no cool drafts or anything like that, and they really appreciate humidity, so the more humidity, the better. So I think generally I have my plant area um, nice and humid, so that would have kind of worked um, best for it, but um, as you can see, I've got some of these sort of little sections, I'm gonna grab some of my um, pruning shears and just kind of get rid of this and clean this up. Be right back. I'm just kind of coming in here and just removing um, anything that's no longer with us. Rest in peace. Um, some of this actually looks like it's still alive, kind of like near the bottom, but the top is all kind of gone, so let's just get rid of that. And Looks like there's a couple more here that, you know, this poor little guy. All right, so still going strong at the bottom there. Um, but yeah, let me uh, get the rest of the soil in and uh, there'll be a big reveal at the end when this is looking much better, much better in its new home. So uh, let me just work on cleaning this up and uh, be right back. So as you can see, it's looking a lot better. Um, if you do go ahead and prune back um, this plant, you can go ahead and use those cuttings to propagate more of your watering jew or your, um, I think these are called what, your transcantia. Um, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but you get the point. Um, yeah, this should do a lot better. Just to review some of those conditions, you're gonna want to make sure that you're not overwatering these, that they're not sitting in, in water, getting root rot, having a saucer with a drainage hole is going to do all of, uh, make all of the difference when it comes to watering. Um, or that is watering when it comes to light, you're gonna to want to make sure that they're getting, um, you know, nothing too harsh. Um, I do have mine kind of inset from a south facing window, but an eastern, uh, easternly facing window would work just as well. Um, no need to fertilize these guys, they go crazy on their own, like they're very hardy, and humidity, humidity, humidity uh, will go a long way. I'm actually gonna take this out, we don't need that there, but I'm going to try to find a new home for this guy and hope that it does just well. I love the pink foliage and the more bright and direct light you provide this plant, great tip here, the uh, more vibrant uh, the pink or those purple tones will become. So if you're struggling with that, that's a good tip. But uh, I think that's it for this one. A little bit of a shorter video, hope you guys liked it. If you have any questions or comment, comments don't hesitate to leave those below until the next one well that's it for me don't forget to leave a comment down below definitely give this video a thumbs up hit that subscribe button and uh, yeah miss you guys already until the next one <laughs>